Pulp MX Network production. EVS Sports brings you a cheeky Brit and an American YouTube racing sensation weekly on the LVK More Than Moto podcast. Here's your hosts, Lewis Phillips and Kellen Brower. Yeah, welcome everyone into episode number five of the LVK More Than Moto podcast brought to you by EVS Sports. Kellen Brower from Racer X, Lewis Phillips from Vital MX back at it again. Uh, I was not in Detroit, Lewis was, so we're going to rehash just a couple quick topics from that. And uh, yeah, then we'll just kind of get into some other stuff that Lewis has on the top of his brain today because he's very, very keen to talk about some stuff. Aren't you, Lewis? Can we just discuss the fact that like I'm sat in like a safari? <laughs> <laughs> the right dogs, now. the dogs immediately jumped on you as soon as like, we started what, the show. You, like, uh, like, is this normal uh, for this, a podcast? Uh, or yeah, you this know, is not the, the professional. Uh, <laughs> this is not the type of professional setting that I demand. Apologies. Just hey, come and sit in the middle of this safari. I mean, I figure we're we not you, even going to bat an eyelid. Look, in the you know, household. this is this is part of the Steve Mathis podcast network, and Steve Mathis has dogs in his I've podcast. It's just I've, the reality. I've never seen, I was, barely could see my face. I just had animals all over me. <laughs> anyway, um, how was Detroit? I didn't go, so how no, was that's it? That's all right. A bit boring. Oh, uh, yeah, a bit boring. It wasn't. A, it was, well, jet led, jet led every lap, Faulkner led every lap, so that's never... You don't great, watch any other it? battles, though, like... Through the I, pack. I barely watch any of them, to be honest. Barely. Just sit on my phone. Oh, okay. Scroll TikTok. What about like, uh, you know, like Eli Tomac going backwards? That didn't like, well, whoa, that, what's yeah, happening? So what's going on? that has dominated yeah. headlines. Yeah. Um, that and McAdoo have dominated headlines. <laughs> how much How much uh, in the 250 main event when the first turn crash happened, were you watching, oh, what's happening at the front of the pack versus what the heck is going on with everyone picking it up in the first corner? No, I was just watching the front because... Hymas, Anstey, and Faulkner were actually really close, but they were that annoying distance where they were really close, but not close enough for anything yeah. to happen. So it was kind of boring, but like you kind of felt like there was the potential for action. Um, there wasn't really. But was was it easy to track though? Uh, like McAdoo and Deegan's progress forward. Uh, to be of? honest, I kind of didn't pay that much attention oh, okay. to Deegan because after. After it was obvious he couldn't couldn't ride to his potential, I was like, "Well, he's not gonna like. Yeah, he'll get what he'll get." Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, all right, let's get into our topics here today. As always, it's going to be a uh, seven minute debate with these topics. Before we do, real quick, want to thank EVS Sports. Over the past thirty nine years, EVS Sports has established themselves as a leader in innovation and technology when it comes to designing protection gear for today's motocross riders. Athletes like R.J. Hampshire, Kyle Chisholm, Freddie Norton, Axel Hodges. And Travis Pastrana all wear EVS when they race, ride, or whatever Travis decides to do that day. Check out evs-sports.com to gear up like the pros and use the code LVK30 to save on anything from knee protection to shoulder braces. I also want to thank Nomura for presenting this show, the leading provider of engine components for motocross, ATV, UTV, and personal watercraft for over two decades. Nomura has been the preferred choice for premium and dependable engine components for more than 20 years. Whether you're restoring your vintage bike, rebuilding your four-wheeler, or upgrading your new 450 race motor, Nomura has you covered. Our extensive line of cast and forged pistons, connecting rods, gasket kits, engine valves, and soon cylinder kits that enhance your engine's performance. Keep an eye out for our new and innovative products in 2024 and beyond. Stay up to date by following us on Instagram at Nomura underscore technologies. And of course, Racetech also presenting the show for 40 years. Racetech has been supplying the motorcycle industry with high quality suspension components made right here in the USA. For modern and vintage, Racetech is your go-to source for suspension performance. As always, they also bring us our fan topic later on, which forgot to send a tweet out on that, but uh, we got some topics from last week that we can uh, rehash a little bit, and I think that'll be kind of good to go over. Uh, so let's get into our first topic, Lewis, and it, it uh, has to do with the Detroit Supercross on the weekend. It has to do with the first turn crash, but it doesn't have to do with what everyone else is talking about, which is Cameron McAdoo and his situation. Uh, it has to do with the fact that there were still a lot of riders down in the first corner as the field kind of came through on the second lap and the yellow flags are waving. They're trying to get people out of the way. Uh, Evan Ferry was the only one receiving medical attention, but he was off track. It was McAdoo, Hammaker, and Vial picking up their bikes on the track. And people are like, why was that not red flagged? Like, what's going on here? Shouldn't they have red flagged it? Um, from your perspective, what do you think? Have we ever had a red flag that hasn't involved medical attention? <sighs> I'm trying to remember, but I feel like there has been times where a, a, a lot of people are down and it's like blocking the track. But I would guess, yeah. Oh, we... oh, actually, you know what? One that I can think of, uh, I don't think it had medical attention. There was a year, maybe the, the COVID year, 
There was a year where the start doubled back onto, yeah, that, yeah. and there was like riders still down in the first corner. Yeah, and so they like immediately were like, no, 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 there's guys picking up their bikes. Red flag is out. But that makes sense because it's so you're going back across the first corner or whatever yeah. so quickly that there's no sense of um, there's so no sense of like stability with the pack. People are going everywhere. Yeah. Whereas, like in this instance, um. It was the first lap, but everyone was as spread out as they could be. Yeah, it was a slow section. Um, you could see, you could like prepare the riders to slow down far in advance. It's not like they were behind a jump or in a blind position. Um, so I, I, I'd be lying if I said that I never considered it being a red flag. But in hindsight, there was no way it should have been a red flag. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when you saw them coming around. Uh, you know, in that first turn and you saw Forkner kind of like slow down and dive out of the way and no one really knew like inside, outside, the flagging wasn't really directing them any direction. It just was a pileup. Um, w- was your initial reaction like, ooh, yeah. that's kind of bad? Or was it like, oh no, they can figure this out? Yeah, no, my initial reaction as they were coming around was like, oh, here we go. Oh, okay. But again, in hindsight, there was room on the outside. There was room on the inside. Yeah. Um, It was very... It was abundantly clear that every single rider was healthy, so there was no concern from that point of view. There was no one in the track who didn't have a helmet on and the appropriate protective attire. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, Fair I mean, game. I I agree. I like I, it's a medical situation uh, that red flags are often brought out by, as you uh, yeah, if the to, because has- if the medic's on the track, you want to. It's safety at that point. You just don't want a medic to be hit by. Yeah racing basically or this rider seems to be in a very very bad way we just have to get there yeah against all odds well well and then sometimes the rider's in a bad way and if the racing continues there's no good way to get them off of the track like if you need them backboarded carted off um which like you know jmart in the heat race went down and the race had just ended but in that situation like they had to you know stabilize him, backboard him, all that stuff. Like those are the yeah. medical situations in which a red flag will come out for, not three guys picking up their bikes in one corner. Yeah, because in high in retrospect, that could happen at any point in the race. You can have two guys take each other out, another guy gets hung up, and then yeah. there are a handful of bikes in a corner. And you never consider those to be a red flag. Yeah. So why would this just because it was a start crash? Um like I say, different different kettle of fish if someone looked hurt. Or yeah. there was the potential that someone needed help. But everyone was up, <coughs> and the only reason they were there was because the bikes were locked together, like some sort of item that <laughs> locks together. Um, <laughs> a lock? A lock and a key? I don't know. Yeah. No, that doesn't work. Um, how much does this... The mind uh, boggles. How much does this whole situation change if uh, they're all okay, but they're down on the backside of like the first jump. We did. Like, that's obviously different. That's blind situation. Right. You've got to. It's a bit of a. It's a bit more of a. Um, what's the word? Kerfuffle. <laughs> to, that's not the official term. It's a, f- it's a, a bit more. Topic. It's a bit more of a kerfuffle <laughs> because then you have to slow the riders down before they jump. So it's a bit more. There's a bit more. It's a bit more hazardous. Yeah. Because you have to slow the riders down in time, and oh, if they don't notice, then they're gonna fly into people whereas as i say there was so much time to prepare the riders the riders could look ahead as they were sweeping like you know it's fine yeah and, no I, i'm I surprised how too. much outcry there is about this i mean does it does the person who was affected by this have anything to do with the outcry don't you think a little bit did you see my tweet uh i don't know you have a lot of tweets with michael sir. jackson what yesterday no I feel like it was maybe one of some of my best work. Oh, I missed it there. Do you want to watch it live on air? It's a TikTok. Oh, I have to watch it? It's a TikTok. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Um, I, POV. Yes, I vaguely remember it, yes. Okay, clearly it didn't have the impact on you. It, I apologize. That I I've wanted been it quite to. busy. Um, no, but still, you were meant to be like, this is tremendous. Tremendous, yeah. Like you, No matter how busy you were, it was meant to have the type of effect. I think I did stop. laugh. I, I think I did laugh, yeah. Are you going somewhere with this? No, just wanted some oh, okay, great. applause. Um, yeah, because I think, like as you put it, the backlash from this, a lot of it is um, a handful, not but a lot, I, but there's I, some I of it. I never considered that because Deegan was gone by the time that the riders came down, came round. So, you, do you really believe it's that? No, but I'm saying that they thought, like, why wouldn't this be red flagged, and that it helps him? Then he can come back. They could maybe in five minutes actually change the handlebars, 
and then he has a clean restart. Again, I'm I'm not saying I oh, agree I'm, with that. I think that's where they're. I'm tired, man. Okay. Yeah. I one round in, we're over the bed bugs. I'm tired. <laughs> like <sighs> you okay over there? That just it's I negatively don't even want to engage. You. Okay. In, like it's just a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's more than last year. It's just it's a lot. Yeah. Um. So if um did you did you watch much of like them uh picking themselves yeah. up in the first turn? What was Vial doing? Like I know he was trying to get himself like sorted or well, whatever, but like those guys were stuck. Vial was just kind of like I don't know what he was doing. If you watch the replay, it's a miracle that like Vial really like flew through the air without his bike and was like hit multiple times in the head. It's a miracle yeah. that he didn't have It ripped his goggles off. Oh really? Yeah, when he hit the ground the strap just immediately broke and then he had no goggles on. I wonder if maybe he was a bit confused. Maybe confused. but it, I don't think his head hit the ground that hard. But his head hit someone else's number plate quite yeah, hard. Yeah, no, that's true. Um so I wonder but then he rode to the mechanics area and then he was suddenly back and very confusing. Yeah, but so from just quickly from your perspective like Vial was just getting himself sorted. It wasn't like he was standing there like, "Hey, Oh, you know, we're in the way, so whatever. Okay, that, you know what? I never considered that, but maybe. Okay, yeah. Interesting. Just an interesting topic, See, I suppose. Right? I'm not gonna... Are you not going to add to it? No. Okay, all right, continuing on. Um, let's get into our second topic here today, uh, which uh, you have a strong opinion about. You wanted to go even maybe hotter on this opinion, but you chose to stick with uh, the fact that you believe Simon Langenfelder, who Simon. is... Simon. Simon Langenfelder, whatever. Uh, like Timon and Pumba. <laughs> okay. Um, who uh, finished second overall in the... What's the Italian championship over there called? It's like the Internazionale Italian... d'Italia. Yeah, but it's not the Italian championship. It's like it's the... It's Internazionale d'Italia. The international Italian championship. Basically, they just realized Because there's that... a three-round series in Italy at the yeah. starts of the year that in, has nothing to do the... with the Italian no. motocross. They championship. basically realized that they can get all of the MXGP riders in Italy and make money. Exactly. If they right. do this special little preseason championship. So, Simon Langefelder... Yep who finished second overall to Ferruccio Zanchi on the weekend. They went 1-4-4-1. Yep. And uh, you believe that the mm -hmm. gas gas talent that he is mm -hmm. is on his way to winning 8 of 20 MX2 GPs this year and the title. Convincingly. Convincingly. Now, if you're an American fan, you can cheer for Simon because he did Red Bull straight with him one year. <laughs> Who knows when that would have been. Um, <laughs> so he, was, he like was a bit in the American scene. So there's that. And that should give you an idea of his skill, because obviously not everyone's doing that. Um, he's really good. Yeah, he is. He's really, really, really good. And you know what? He very much was... He was almost in the title fight last year with missing like four rounds. If you go back and do the math, it is so obvious that if he hadn't got injured, he would have won the championship convincingly. Okay. That was his second year on Red Bull Gas Gas Factory Racing. So this is his third He's only getting better. It's going to be Lagenfelder versus Kunin for the championship. No doubt in my mind. Okay. With a sprinkling of Everts. My other hot take is Everts is going to be much better than Adamo. Why Why are you so anti-Adamo? I'm not anti-Adamo. But like, okay, why Why is Adamo, in your opinion, like not going to be that level again this year? Was he the best rider last year? I'm not saying he's going to be the best rider, but you come off of winning the world title however you got there. You're going to have more confidence rolling into this year, when no? When you entered the 2008 World Championship, did you pick Steve Ramon <laughs> as a heavy favorite because he won the championship the year before? So you're not picking Prado to even contend? That's, that, every, insta every instance is unique. Okay. Um, I would say that Everts proved to be the... Everts was very much in a development phase last year. Yeah, for sure. Whereas Adamo was more the finished package. So I would say that by the end of the year, Everts proved to be the better rider. And again, another off-season should have helped Everts tremendously. Um, so yeah, I think... I believe that Everts will be very, very good, but I do believe that it will be Lagenfelder versus Kunin for the championship. And I do believe that Lagenfelder will win eight GPs out of 20, at least... Kunin will win five or six. Okay. And then DeWolf, Everts, and Adamo would take the rest. So you know where I stand on this Adamo thing, because you and I talked about that like two or three years ago when he was still on SM Action, and I said, when is 
factory KTM going to put him on the bike. I think he can win. And you thought I was ridiculous. And then I was vindicated last year. I don't so. remember this conversation. I definitely remember that. Uh, it happened at the Phoenix Supercross in 2020. Video I games think. have warped your mind. Here we go. Um, so, but no, uh, back to Langenfelder. What, in your opinion, injuries aside, what has been like the weak point for him over the last couple of years that hasn't been like consistent results for him? I don't think there has been a weak point. Really? You don't like... 2022, he... it was his first year as a factory rider. Yeah. Naturally, he wasn't going to compete with the Alan Gertz. Sure. But, but he was third in the championship. Last year, he started slow. Wasn't gr- happy with the bike, but also I believe maybe there was a bit of like championship pressure playing a role in that. But then he broke through in Spain and went 1-1. Then got injured immediately after that and then came back and I think he won... With a... I think he after his injury... I believe he won at least one moto at all but like two of the GPs. So he was always there. Okay. Um, He's great. Honestly, he's a really good rider. I can't really claim him because of, despite my efforts to like build a relationship, we've just not really got there. Maybe, you should, maybe you should learn German. Uh, I've got a uh, qualified in German. Okay. I've got there a certificate. Do you want to see you. it? No, I don't. I'm qualified in German. I took three years of it in college. So Are you so qualified? Maybe we could do this podcast in German. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, but you hit on a point that... Uh, das ist wunderbar, Kellen. You hit on a point that, in my opinion, is Langenfelder's weak point. Pressure. When there no. is pressure situation, I don't think he hits so far. That might change, but he's done, to me, nothing that really like shows, especially in Motocross of Nations, where there's a lot of pressure, nothing that's like, wow, there is Simon Langenfelder. That guy is about to be the MX2 hero for the next three years. Like, that has not happened. When the pressure's off, and I know he won the first ever uh, GP that he had with Gas Gas, and that was probably a pressure cooker situation. However, I feel like when he gets in the title fight, like you said, fifths happen, sevenths happen, and he just gets a little bit lost. For some reason, I can't remember what he did at the Erne Nations. There's a he part crashed of, a lot. There's a part of me that feels like he was great at one point, though. He was uh, fourth overall in combined qualifying and warm-up, I think. But a- after that, no. Like, he crashed. Who the won thing- the MX2 qualifier? RJ? Did RJ win the qualifier? No, Vial did, didn't he? Did Vial win the qualifier? I thought Vial did. Why do I feel like I thought Simon he caught, did? Maybe he caught and passed a... Um, I don't know. But, I, again, I went to uh, Erne thinking Langenfelder... Mm. I thought Langenfelder would carry Germany... Yep. Onto the podium. So did we all. Roxon did. Roxon almost carried them there. And Roxon was supposed to be that guy. But I thought Langenfelder would go 6 5, 5 7, whatever, like Vial's yep. results were, and put it Germany on the podium. And it didn't happen. It wasn't our best day. But you Pressure. know what? We've had a winter to pick ourselves up by the bootstraps. Um, and it's Langenfelder's year. Okay. I mean, I, I like him a lot. I think he's really talented. And nice I think- guy. Yeah, very, very nice guy, very personable. And really sick style. Yeah, like all the all the boxes are ticked. Like he is, in in my opinion, like the future of uh, yep. German Needs motocross. Needs to come to bit. America. So, yeah, that'd be great too. Told um, me he's too scared. Do I agree with 8 out of 20 GPs? Mm, no, and I'm not sure that I think he's going to win the world title either. But Who's I your do pick think for the MX2 title? I At the moment, I don't necessarily have a clear favorite, but I do think Adamo will be much better than you're giving him credit for. You know who no one considers? Who? Beniston. Yeah, because he just was like nowhere to be He's found. He's just the most year. invisible personality. So, yeah. like, but he, he could, he could do it for sure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you think Langenfelder and Kunin, nobody else? Uh, like basically. I say, Everts will be in there. Adamo will be in there. Kaido Wolf will be in there. But for the most part, Langenfelder and Kunin are going to shine brightly. Okay. All right. Um, I would bet. Like, there's absolutely no way that Austria doesn't win this championship. Apart from Beniston. Beniston's for threat. <laughs> Absolutely no way. But putting Beniston to one side. How right? dare you put down Triumph's Mikkel Harup that, <laughs> that heavily? He finished second in on debut. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Looked pretty good. Um, all right. Next topic. We kind of changed up the format a little bit this week at the advice of the venerable journalist Adam Wheeler. And he said that the non-moto topics should be sprinkled back into the middle of the episode instead of put at the end. And so we're going to try it. We're going to put one non-moto topic right in the middle and one at the very end and see if this format works better. So the next one we're going to get into is much more just kind of off the cuff because you're from the UK and I'm from the USA and our verbiage uh, sometimes does not match 
we have very uh, different language usage of certain things. Yeah, for and- instance, before I came here, I'd never heard the word verbiage, but for some reason, it's like a buzzword in this country. <laughs> okay. The amount of conversations I've had where people have like, yeah, the verbiage, and I'm just like, I don't shut up. I, I apologize. Um, so the the reason this even started was yesterday. Uh, you were saying you wanted to come do this podcast earlier because you would hit traffic yeah. on the way home, and I said you should just take surface streets, which is not the highway. It's like just roads that go yeah. along the highway, around the highway, back or whatever. Roads. So you call that back roads? Yeah. Which I I guess that makes sense because what name how they're surface streets? Because I don't know. I guess normally you'd say like a highway is above level i don't know what the the reason why it's called surface streets that makes so little sense the highway here uh through the middle of our town is is just flat on the ground it's never raised it doesn't go over roads but it's still a surface (laughs) so you're being very literal that's irrelevant we're talking about the surface of like the the like sea level of the ground sea level roads then (laughs) sea level roads um so you guys call back roads which to me makes sense because in the uk i feel like it's much more uh there's maybe a main road, but there's a lot of just kind of like yeah, roads backwards. going all over the place. Um, but uh, so now that you've lived here for a little while now, uh, because you lived here, how how many months last year did you actually like, were you here? Uh, Four months? A majority. A majority. Okay, let's say that. And then this year, now you're, you're probably- Yeah, like in my life, so. I've spent like years here. Like if you- <clears throat> So the first thing I'll ask you is what are the most like annoying things that that Americans say that you're just like, why don't you use this word instead? Okay, wow, I wish you'd prepared me for that. Um, Do you want me to start with the list of, of well, things? Well, like, I've got used to trash. I say trash now. I've got used to saying gas. Instead of bin and petrol, yeah. right? Because no one knows what a bin is. Yeah. I don't like trunk. What do you say instead of trunk? Boot. 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 The boot of the car? Yeah. That's what it's all about. Not a trunk. Like, was it? Why is it a trunk? Uh, I don't know. That's what it's called. The only thing in the world <laughs> that's called a trunk is attached to an elephant, and it's at the front, not the back. Okay. So that doesn't even make sense. Uh, what about like swim trunks? And what do you call a bonnet? The hood. Yeah, I don't like that. Why? I don't know. Okay. It doesn't sit. I don't right like with bonnet. Me. It sounds like hood, it's a clothing hood item. Hood sounds too much like you're trying to be cool. A hood sounds like we're trying yeah, to be cool. Yeah, it just cool. sounds like we're not like we're not we're not street racers. Okay. Just pop the bonnet. But the, a bonnet to me sounds like it's like a, like a skirt the, or something like pop that. Pop the hood. Put on, it's like, oh, put on your down. bonnet and let's go out for a day. Like you tell me, pop the bonnet, pop the. What do you say? Are you okay? Hood. You tell me, pop. <laughs> you tell me, pop the hood, and I'm just a bit like, mm, you're hard. All right, chill out. Right. Um. Though, so some of the most common ones that uh, I listed out here, I just went to some article and it listed some common okay. ones. Um, fries versus chips. You guys will never use the word like French fries. No, or no, fri- no. Fries has like fries and chips are like equal. synonymous now. Yeah, like no, like I feel like it always has been like some like you can say fries, yeah. you can say chips. Everyone knows what you're talking about. You say chips here, no, they look at you like you're insane because you call them crisps. Yeah, crisps. Yeah, but they're chips. They're potato chips. They're little chip off of the potato. Chip off the old block. Yeah, basically. And like for you, a chip is like a literal wedge of a potato. Like a, yeah. a massive slice of it, so no, that's a chunky chip. That's a chunky no, that's chip. A potato oh. wedge. Oh, so you do use the word wedge? When did the word wedge enter this conversation? You just said it. What I said? It, <laughs> I said like a potato wedge, like a slice yeah, of a potato. Yeah, we have potato wedge. Potato you call wedges? that chips? No, no, no. What, what is chips? Just the a literal, chip is like, like a chunky chip. A fry is a skinny chip, and a chip is a chunky chip, and a potato which wedge is like is a, a wedge of a wedge. potato. No, a potato wedge is a potato wedge. So what's it? I, I'm okay. Now I'm even more confused. Um, this another, actually makes perfect sense. Another one is uh, the words apartment versus flat. No, um, no, that's the same. You apartment flat. They're both used. Yeah, equally. but like, why flat? Like, where? Where well, is that? Well, using your log- logic of surface streets, they're on flat ground. No, not always. I'm just using your logic. Okay, so you live in an apartment, yep. or, and you're on the bottom level of it. No, second. Oh, okay. So we're not on the flat yeah, ground. My floor's flat. Interesting. Oh, your floor's well, I flat. I don't agree with this. I'm just using your stupid <laughs> logic for surface streets. <laughs> but you just, you contradicted yourself because you don't even live on a flat ground apartment. I don't know, Kellen. Okay. Um, another one is garbage versus rubbish, which like you said, you throw yeah, stuff I in the trash garbage. instead of bins. Yeah. So you say garbage or yeah. trash. Yeah. You, you only say rubbish. It's like, is this rubbish? Yeah. 
I like the word rubbish. I think it's hilarious. I think it's a well used. Okay, well, don't laugh at us. No, I th- like. I think it's a great word. Like it just is like, oh, that's rubbish. I think that's awesome. Well, I'm trying to think. There is there has been times like describing words that I've said in a press box that okay. people just look at me and I'm just like, what do you think about the word bollocks? What do you mean? Yeah, that's bollocks. Yeah. Like yeah. instead of that's ridiculous or yeah, okay. but it's more like that's bollocks is like more to like more specific to like um oh hey Lewis Kellen just told me that he's the greatest person in the world and I just go oh, that's bollocks <laughs> okay like you know it's more specific to like yeah. people chatting shit. Well, you interviewed Ansi this weekend and uh, his uh, best quote of the weekend was there was knobs out there was all this stuff yeah and all that, that. we figured but, that no one would understand that yeah but I mean why uh like. There's so many other words for that. Why is knobs so popular there? It's not so popular. It's well, just he's popular enough that he just went right to yeah, it right away. it's just one of many. So everyone uses different words, don't okay. they? Like, um, yeah. Okay. It's one of many. It's not like the overwhelming word. Um, this one's always a little bit like, eh, to me. Parking lot versus car park. Yeah, I don't like parking lot. I've started well, saying why? it, but like, it's a car park. Like, but car park to me is like you put your like your car goes on a swing, your car goes down That's the slides because it's a park for you cars. Are ridiculous. No, I honestly, mean, how do you? A parking lot is a place where cars you just park them. And where I... does the word lot come into that? Hey, because where's it's... your car park? So I was in the car park. That makes sense. <laughs> a lot because it's just a a big area in which cars are parked, like a lot of land. Kevin, where's your car parked? In the car park. In the parking lot. In the car park. Literally makes sense. <laughs> Literally could not. That is the most self-explanatory term ever. No, I I like parking lot better. I I agreed with some of the terms that what we else listed is on your list. This is fine. Uh, that's as far as I've got. Oh, okay. But what well, uh, to preview a future topic? What about lift versus elevator? Yeah, no, uh, I both are used again. Elevator's just like calm down. <laughs> calm down. Like, let's just use lift. Like it's quicker. In yeah, out but- of the conversation. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go and take the elevator. It's like. Oh, just calm down. Who are you trying to be? Who are you don't trying you guys, to fool? Don't you guys use the word lift though to like can you give me a lift somewhere? Yeah. And then you also use it to lift yeah. yeah, so like that's confusing to me. Take a taxi and get in an elevator instead of can I get in a lift and then can you lift me no, up? Because a lift is more room. casual. Do you want a lift? Like oh I'll, I'll, I'll take you. You don't go you don't go, oh I'm getting a you wouldn't if I was if I'd ordered a taxi to get home, I wouldn't tell you I'm getting a lift from the taxi. A lift is a casual friendly like okay. doing you a favor i'm doing you a favor i'll give you a lift anyone doing lifts tonight yeah i mean we use that terminology here we, i'll give you a lift or something but yeah so why are you why are you calling me out because i feel like that's the name of of like what most people in the uk use for taxi no do you need a lift no really no all right well the taxi doesn't give you a lift because you're that's a service he's not your mate your mate gives <laughs> he's you not a lift. Mate. hey you don't know i could be friends with the taxi driver over there oh. um well, all we'll right get into that yeah um, that's the end of our first half of the show. And I want to thank EVS sports again for, uh, presenting this show over the past 39 years, EVS sports has established themselves as the leaders in innovation and technology. When it comes to designing protection gear for today's motocross riders, athletes like RJ Hampshire, Kyle Chisholm, Freddie Norton, Axel Hodges, and Travis Estrana all wear EVS when they race ride or whatever Travis decides to do that day. Check out EVS sports.com to gear up like the pros and use the code LVK 30 to save on anything from knee protection to shoulder braces. All right, time to get into our Race Tech fan question of the week. Shout out to Race Tech Suspension Building. A reliable, world class engine requires a combination of state of the art equipment and experienced, knowledgeable technicians. Race Tech provides quality, precision engine services using the best equipment and processes in the industry. And our fan question of the week, again, a, a little bit of a topic from last week. So even the, the question is a little bit from last week. Um, at Dieter Lassat on Twitter, Lewis says, there was a Supercross in India this weekend. Uh, Subes, Cedric Subiros, Jordi Tixier, uh, Matt Moss were there. Thoughts on this? Seems like a market where WSX was aiming at, but now they seem to have an established domestic series. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I guess the basic question is, first of all, like, what are your thoughts on those types of guys like getting rides to go race Indian Supercross? Well, the impression that I get is that there's a lot of money. Available. Well, not a lot of money. For right. those guys... There's money that makes it worthwhile. Um, I feel as though the reason that the Indian Championship has caught my attention is the WSX guys were really like friendly with it. Did okay. you notice this? There was a lot of like comments and like. No, but great. you're all, you're all over that social media well, with the so continue. Yep. 
this looks great, blah blah blah. So that's kind of what drew me to it. Yeah. Um. So I feel I've always I've always, it's so much that I've actually wondered if WSX has a stake in the Indian Supercross Championship because it's almost borderline. I mean, there's a lot of borderline. Um. So I wonder that. Should have probably done research on that. Um. And. Yeah, it does just seem like WSX butter, are buttering them up to use their platform. Um, I haven't seen highlights. I meant to look into like how good the track was. I saw some like uh, you know Instagram videos and stuff like that, and it looked like not to put it down, but it looked like it was kind of just mounds of dirt thrown together to some degree. Not a super, there wasn't a rhythm section. Um, there was. Oh, okay, but it wasn't. It, it definitely doesn't look like dirt works went there. You know what I mean? Like there, it was uneven jumps in some areas and and stuff like that just it wasn't totally perfect but it looked like it was doable like, but like I mean, was, was there like a triple quad or was it just like you know doubles around know. the track like just doubles i mean the instagram videos i saw were like two sections and no the that particular you know big line stuff wasn't happening it was like double in and then yeah. table over single or whatever but um i'm not the wsx expert that would be steve mathis but from what i've heard there will be Asia, and there will be South America, and there will be Abu Dhabi in the fall of this year. Yeah. Um, by the way, fall, in England, we call it autumn. Okay. Um, just to add to the previous topic. Um, so, yeah, I'd imagine uh, <clears throat> India's in Asia, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'd, I'd imagine that's on the cards, because I don't believe that Indonesia is a go anymore. Why do you think, having seen the Indonesian races that MXGP has done, um, they're going back to China now? So they're they've obviously entertained the Asian market sometimes, but like, what is it about it that like isn't working? Because it seems like there's a lot of draw and a lot of attention by the the local crowds there, uh, to a degree. But obviously, it's like government funded and stuff. Yeah, but so who said? What do you mean? Who said it isn't working? Well, I'm saying like, you know. This is the first time like an Indian Supercross series has had any like real attention to it. Like if you watch some of their old videos, dude, it was like nothing tracks on some really weird bikes. And now suddenly they have like kind of a series where it seems like they can afford a little bit better riders. Like why why is this market draw not been bigger before with how massive of a market this is in Asia with the motorcycle industry? Well, that's a double barreled question in many ways, but even maybe even triple barreled. Um first of all, the first year that we went to Indonesia, I did an interview with Roger Harvey and he said something along the lines of they sell more Honda scooters in Indonesia than they do dirt bikes in the entire world. Yeah. So that's the market. Right, exactly. Um this your point just makes me wonder where has the funding come from for the Indian Supercross championship? Is it some sort of WSX partnership. Well, I know that they have a. I think their title sponsorship is Petronas, which oh, really? is that yeah Malaysian yep. uh, Mercedes oil F1 company. team sponsors. Yes. Yep. Um. So they seem to be involved. I mean, again, that's this a big is, deal. If it uh, well, if, they definitely were involved in some Indian Supercross championship before this. They're like oh. the main team was the Petronas, some sort of Chinese bike team. Um. I don't know how involved they are now, but they obviously have been before. So. I'm just Again, trying like, to find it because I'm pretty sure I didn't see a title sponsor. So keep talking. Um, but yeah, anyway, I guess how this relates to uh, a market in in India for their super supercross to exist to some level, and now there's a domestic series, and does that take away draw from WSX going there? No, I don't think so at all. I think that you have these type of athletes, which will certainly draw a crowd, and you know, Subs, Tixie, Matt Moss. Very talented riders. They will draw attention by going there. They won't quite draw the attention of Ken Roxon, Joey Savacci, et cetera, et cetera, that WSX can bring to the table. And I think that is an extra level draw that WSX has that doesn't matter what market they go to. They have the athletes that can make it more important for them. Yeah, I think I misunderstood the question. What's the question? Does this deter WSX from going? Well, there? it's he says seems like a market where WSX was aiming at, but now they seem to have established a domestic series. So to me, that kind of draws the comparison of like, okay, well, it's already been taken away. Like WSX obviously isn't really trying to come to the US because there's an established domestic series with top level talent here. But I'm saying I think why it doesn't draw away from having a domestic series versus having WSX 
is because the top level talent in in WSX is still going to be a little bit higher than the domestic series for India. Yeah, it only helps. Exactly. Because now there's a market that not only WSX aren't going into a new market, they're going into a market that and they can I would bet my bottom dollar that the a round of the Indian Supercross League will be a support class at WSX India if yeah, it happens. Could be. Hundred um, percent. That's 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 too logical for it to not happen. Well, like on the flip side of this, WSX tried to go to France and Germany this past year, didn't work out. Like they had to cancel those rounds. But if they do, if if WSX has a round in France, which has an established yep. domestic series, do you think that like people are like, meh, seen it? No, they're like Ken Roxon. Oh, yeah. I want to see that. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, and in Abu Dhabi, I was there, obviously, um, to the chagrin of some. <laughs> um, and the crowd reacted to the name Ken Ruxin. Yeah. They didn't react to any other name, but and may, may, I don't know, maybe that's just because uh, he was on, like, maybe in the, uh, like, on the news channels and stuff locally, they kind of made a big deal of this is the guy. Yeah. Maybe they just knew of him. But when the name Ken Ruxin was mentioned, there was a clear reaction. So that name does exactly um, transcend the sport almost. How important do you think it is to have these areas around the world have their own domestic series? So it's not just WSX comes into this market every single year and then leaves, and there's literally nothing else left behind. Like you know, like I feel like when MXGP goes to like when they went to Qatar, for example, there there wasn't like a, a motocross scene there. Oh, uh. so like you need to. If you're gonna go to these markets and like draw audiences, I feel like something needs to be there as well for the fans to like continue to stay latched onto and continue to follow the sport. Well, no? Indonesia has a motocross championship. I do feel as though Qatar had one as well. But I mean, how big is it? Like, it's, yeah, but that's all relative. In our I eyes, guess, it's yeah. small. But if you get a little Qatari on here, they'll probably tell you it's the biggest event well, of sure. their life. Yeah, but I mean, that's don't important, be, um, right? Pr- don't be um privileged or whatever the word is for that well, i apologize but that's important right to have like domestic is domestic series established to show to showcase the talents of those areas and then maybe there's a chance that like there is a, a real talented indian rider that's coming up that now has this domestic series to compete in or to aspire yeah. to and then maybe he gets involved in ama supercross wsx mxgp whatever yeah. in the future right yeah i mean maybe that's a bit of a stretch but sure it's possible well that's what i'm saying is like you you establish a framework of success within a domestic series there and you build towards getting more talent around the yeah, world yeah that's very unlikely to happen but it's a good roadmap to endeavor for exactly okay um, so yeah, I, I think it's fine. I don't think it walks on WSX's toes, and I think it's great that we have a domestic. It Supercross definitely does not India. walk on WSX's toes. No, to answer that part clearly. Yes. Um, all right. Next topic. Let's move into uh, this one that you brought today, and you tweeted about this over the weekend. I think Sunday. I believe I also hinted at this last week. I think yes, I, you did. Yeah, I you said, said like, this, this would be a future, future topic. But, by the way, when did you tweet about this? I don't know. Well, you, you tweeted about it. Um, you've gotten some little bit of backlash from it, or just people that are like, "How? No, it's why? Just or whatever." A good debate. Okay, good debate. Um, and it's that you believe that MXGP travel mm-hmm. uh, to travel to all twenty now MXGPs that there are yep. for a, a single year is easier than the US travel. Yes. So why? Um. Well, let me tell you. Um. <laughs> um. Obviously, the starting point is MXGP goes to Argentina, which is a 35-hour travel day. Um, actually, Seems real easy. Uh, Indonesia is similar. But those are just two trips. Yeah. So, like, it kind of is, is doesn't affect you as much because, like, you have time to prepare for this one massive trip. Apart from that, you're just bouncing around Europe. To relate it to American terms... It would basically be like racing in Anaheim, San Diego, Oakland, and Seattle for yeah. the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, the in, within Europe, the biggest time difference is two hours in Sweden. Um, and yeah, that just makes it very easy. Okay. Whereas, like for Detroit, I did a five-hour flight, and in MXGP, you don't do that unless you're going to Argentina or Indonesia. That's my point. Okay. Not and not to mention the time difference. Uh, again, apart from Indonesia and Argentina, um, and actually Argentina for some reason is only four hours different to Europe's time. Don't know how that works. Um, 
um, yeah, apart from those trips, you don't deal with a massive time difference. Whereas I feel like the three hour time difference here, or going east coast or vice versa, is enough to mess up with your body clock and make it difficult. Okay. Like I wasn't I, like in Detroit, I didn't get to sleep until like two a.m. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that. when I had to have an alarm at five a.m. Detroit time, that Miserable. had an impact on me. Oh yeah, I know. Um, whereas when you go to Belgium from the UK, I'm talking coming from the UK. If you're actually in mainland Europe, there's even less of a time difference. Yeah. Um, if you're going from Belgium to Spain, it's an hour flight. There's no time difference. Happy days. That's my point. Where? Uh, so you lived about. Um, an hour from Heathrow, yep. and that was your main airport to fly out of. Well, no, Gatwick was. Okay, Gatwick was your main airport to fly, and that was what twenty minutes for you. Yeah. Um, what percentage of GPs in Europe would you say you flew to? Oh, I flew to all of them. All of them. Occasionally, I would drive to Lommel. I thought you when I uh, went to Mantova, and I know that was a double header, but I thought you guys drove. No. 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 Hmm. Someone else, Ray Archer, did that year. Okay, but um, people have done it. Um, but so you fly to Gatwick, and like you know, if you go to uh, another perfect example, never have to do a layover anywhere. I've never in all, my, apart from Argentina and Indonesia, I've never had to do a layover in a GP season. Whereas yeah. that's kind of more par for the course here. Okay, so let's say you fly out of uh, Gatwick and you go to uh, Faenza or something like okay. that. Um, how your your travel time there is twenty minutes. How long is your flight time? Hour and a half. And then how far are you from the track wherever you land? Uh, I can't remember Fiennes because only okay. Went there once. What's it like a more common one? Majora? Like let's. I'm trying to think of like Italy an hour because, or so, an hour or two hours. So then total travel time for you would be like four hours, maybe five. Yeah, but I'm also I'm also I'm not just comparing it to Supercross. I'm comparing it to outdoors as well. I know. I'm uh, trying to get a, an understanding yes. of like because Italy is kind of the opposite side of Europe to the UK. Yes. Yeah, one, well, Spain would be the furthest. Well, Sweden would be the furthest, but that's kind of yeah. It's own. Li- they they got their own little thing going on up there. Um, do you, do you jump a time zone to go to Italy? Because yeah. you're GMT and they're GMT plus one. Yeah, they're one hour ahead. Yeah. Um, so which is fine because your body doesn't. Yeah, even yeah, notice. exactly. Um, and then what well, in terms of like where these airports are, like how frequent are the flights? Like, can you? There's loads. I can you fly just take I, them anytime. From, from Gatwick, I can fly to Milan. Like seven times a day okay because i'm just trying to get a clear understanding like here in the u.s one of the nice things that i that we have here you and i specifically a lot of airports buy us so we have a lot of options to fly out of and uh there's loads of times like any time of the day you want to fly there's going to be a flight i'm more specifically talking longer flights here on average yeah bigger time difference to deal with on average that's kind of my main argument so um we both live in California. Yes. A healthy amount of riders live in California for a short duration and then live in Florida. Do you think that that would change your perspective at all? As soon as the series goes east, you have a second place to live with less distance to travel. Yeah, that would help. Day. But then if you're living in Tallahassee, you've still got to do layovers and everything. So that's yeah. difficult. Um, I agree with you. Like the, the flying schedule for us is is sometimes really difficult and often slept on by like fans. Like uh, aside from what we go through, the athletes themselves having to do this schedule and then still be on the top of their game every Saturday is a really underrated thing. Like not many people talk about it. I was surprised how the time difference didn't really affect me in Detroit, but I remember Tampa last year. Oh my! I was press day starts at one o'clock. I almost didn't make it. Yeah, like it was hard. Well, uh, honestly, like every national from living in California and then going to nationals, at, you know, East Coast nationals miserable yeah i reckon because i'm gonna i'm probably gonna tag dark side in for a lot of nationals because this year. free practice at a national starts at 8 a.m yep we usually have to be there 7 30 or yep. earlier at least and yep. that's 4 30 a.m in california yep. which means that some places the hotels are an hour mm-hmm. away from the track and then you have to wake up you know at like 2 30 a.m to even get to the track mm-hmm. your time basically preaching to the choir i <laughs> know i agree like the east coast going california to east coast sucks and then I'm sure the people on the East Coast right now traveling out here and then being up until 2 a.m. to do a Supercross race and then having to do media afterwards and then debrief and all that stuff, they're probably miserable. So I get it. Like, it's long travel plus time change. Yeah, long days. Definitely easier if you live in Florida. I think so, yeah. Um, or I guess the best situation would be to live central time. 
That's what Anton does. And then you're more, and then that's closer to traveling in the Europe within the Europe time zones. Oh yeah, just just a little observation from myself. I feel like I'm one of the only people who can really yeah argue I mean, it. I mean, uh, there's Ollie Stone, um, Jared Keller, um, Max Anstey, Max, yeah, him. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I guess there's a lot of riders. I was just thinking. Yeah, of you're just like people. digging into the industry side of it a little bit. Um, yeah, but yeah. The riders are fine. Uh, I guess you're right. Like because you, in the UK you lived in what would be kind of like if you flipped Europe upside down, you'd be like in the California of how far you had to travel yeah. into Europe. Uh, because and the you're not in I'm the middle. Going is like Seattle. Yeah, because you're not in the middle. Yeah. Um. So the farthest like European GP you'd have to go to, yeah, is is shorter than. Yeah half of the ones we have to do this to, this is a perfect here. example most of the riders living in belgium drive to most of the gps so there's six flyaways now uh two in indonesia one in argentina one in china turkey's not considered a flyaway not really i mean they they pack uh flight cases for it but i mean it, for me it was like a four hour flight so okay like, really, so even like, that's gotten easier but before covid wasn't there easier. six six or seven uh uh well we had Qatar at points we had Thailand at points we had they've always said they want six I think they've said six yeah um, six is their magic number yeah yeah okay um Mexico, Mexico USA had, sometimes yeah. yeah you know there um, was one year 2016 we started with Qatar Thailand Argentina Mexico that was intense <laughs> brutal <laughs> yeah that was that was a hard I think that's moment. where you lose people with the USA is 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 more difficult because then they see that and they're like. No, that sounds awful. So. Yeah, but again, that's one month. <laughs> I know. So you just push through that one month and then it settles down. Well, whereas Lewis, this is more like, this is a more of a slow grind, whereas yeah. MXGP travel is more peaks and valleys. Well, you know what, Lewis? Push push through the six months of it here. Well, just... We, we had a really nice time in California where the first four rounds are basically driving distance. So not too difficult. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, boy. Um. All right, back into non-moto for our last topic of the day. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I have an opinion on this, but, uh, you do. So Lewis, tell us about people in elevators and what irks you about where them. Where do you, where do you believe I'm going with this? I believe you're going to think about like etiquette of like, why is everyone so awkward? Why doesn't everyone move out of the way nicely when I'm trying to get in or out of a certain floor? That's where I'm assuming you're going with it. Two points. Okay. Why is it that in elevators, people feel the need to talk to each other? We're not going to talk, we're not, we don't talk to each other anywhere else, but you get in the elevator with a stranger and there's some sort of need to make small talk. Why? What, 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 is, what about the elevator creates mm, this environment? My guess would be that it's one of the only places that forces you to be like really, really close to someone else. Like you're, you're basically like breathing on someone's neck suddenly and it feels awkward to just be like, <sighs> and not say like, so what'd you but think of the, the race or whatever? Walk so. out, the conversation stops and you act like you never knew them. Sure, whatever. So I don't understand why the elevator or lift is this conversational box. What about box. what about when you ride the metro in the UK? I don't know what that means. Yeah, or the underground. Oh, oh what's it called in the in uh, underground? Underground. Yeah, because yeah, in like France, it's metro well, and stuff. Um, no, that's just a train. No one talks. Yeah, you get I mean, the occasional nutter who's high and sings, but nuttos nutter. 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 So that's like a crazy person. Yeah. And we're back Nutter. on verbiage. Yeah. Uh, but that, yeah. So verbiage again. What's your second point about elevators? Um, why is there always one guy who feels like he is the king of the buttons? Oh, what, floor, <laughs> what floor are you going to? It's like, I'm fine. I'll push, I'll push that myself, thanks. Oh, what floor are you going to? Uh, no, fuck off. Push yeah, but- a button, get to the back of the elevator, let me decide. Maybe I don't know what. Maybe I'm just here for a good time. <laughs> maybe I don't know what floor I'm going to go to. You just want to go for a ride? Maybe I don't know what floor I'm going to go to, and maybe you're taking that decision away from me. Maybe I just want to see what floats my boat. What, why is there always one guy who takes over the buttons? Who do you think you are? I mean, I feel like that's just like trying to be courteous and help, especially in a tight quarters I elevator. Push the where button there's a, and I step away. Especially when there's a lot of people in an elevator, and sometimes like you just all shove in and then realize, oh, I did not press the button on the way in. So it's nice to have elevator button guy be like, hey, what floor is everyone going to? I am right here by the buttons, and I can press them for you. No? I just don't understand. Like, who, like I don't understand. And you know what? Maybe I've been guilty of that in the past, but I don't understand. It, the- so again, back to uh, some of the previous topics we've had. Was there a specific incident that this irked you with over the weekend, Lewis? No, I just, mm. like, 
even I, I was in the elevator with someone in Detroit, and even I felt the need like I should say something. And I was just like, what? And then I just had this awakening of like, why? Why don't you just, what I normally do if I don't really want to talk to someone, I just look at my phone. Like, I'll yeah, just but scroll through it's Twitter not, or they, whatever. They do it too. It's both sides. You're just like, and it's like, nice weather. And it's like, F- fuck off. <laughs> She's so aggressive about it. What does it matter? You see this person for five seconds of your exactly. life. Exactly. So why are we talking? I don't know. Why don't, you, why don't you like because you're gonna see this person once and probably never again, why don't you just like throw curveballs to them? You know? Be like, what is life about? <laughs> just hit them with that. I just hit someone with my car. Sure. <laughs> Whatever, like stun them. Be like, that was the weirdest elevator ride I've ever had. Because clearly it bothers you that Have you had a busy day? They go, No. You go, Yeah, I've just married my sister. Wow! Just really throw curveballs. Okay, out. yeah, I, yeah. I, I I didn't expect that one. Um, <laughs> I just think I was trying to come up with the most random thing that would really confuse okay. them. Uh, I know we're going to Birmingham later this year, but chill out, Lewis. I don't know. That's an inside American joke. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so these two things I'm not grind cool you to, to your be core. On the inside of that joke, they grind you to your core. Uh, what are you going to do to try to make your elevator experience no, no, better? Disclaimer. If I had a sound effect, I would do it now. Disclaimer: I'm kind of taking a piss. Like I'm not that fussed about it. It just kind of some it entered yeah, my you're mind. You're pretty fussed. No, it entered my mind. I thought it was a bit funny. Um, I'm not that fussed. I mean, I do notice it and I do believe it's weird, but I'm not this passionate about it. Um, just thought it was good, good, good uh, debate topic and a bit weird, isn't it? Just a bit strange. What I think is always really interesting about elevators, and and we deal with this a lot at Supercross, is, um. An elevator will open when we're trying to go either up or down and it's already like full and there's always a handful of people in there that are like, come on, we can make more room for you. And then they're like shoving people aside. And like, if you're already in the elevator, you're like, I'm pretty cramped in here. What do you, why are you making this worse for me? And there's, if you're in the elevator with like 20 people, there's always just one person who tries to be the maestro of the conversation <laughs> and just get everyone involved. It's just like, mate, I'm just trying to get from A to B. I ain't here for a good time. Have you had many for uh, a long time either? Have you had any interactions yet at Supercross where you get in an elevator and fans recognize you and they're like, "Oh, I want to strike up conversations about the industry," and you're like, "We've got like twelve seconds yeah, here." Yeah, so. yeah, that's the worst part. <laughs> oh, so now no, I'm I'm on some sort of game show suddenly where I've got a so I've got try and got to be well. It goes it goes for it applies to strangers as well. I've got to try and be nice, articulate, good conversationalist, and I'm against a buzzer. Because you're you're going off. We're on floor one. You're getting off on floor two. Yeah. So I I normally just melt and just like because I just can't <laughs> can't think that fast. Okay. So when someone asks you like, uh, oh, so what's like Max doing in 2025? You just are like, oh. well, no, I can't answer that question. Can't. Oh, I don't know. You know That's the what question fans that like I to really do. Hate? What? Who do you think's gonna win tonight? So I don't know. Do I look like Mystic Meg? Well, maybe you have an opinion about it. And I, want like, to know. I just feel like that's pressure. I don't know. That's definitely a question when I'm with Steve, I hear all the time, but I always assume it's fantasy related. Okay. Like people want well, to like, know. Like, I'm just like, oh, fucking, what do I look like? Some sort of. Uh, you cover the sport. Maybe they think that you have inside information because like you heard Chase Sexton made a late bike change and suddenly it's going to be much better. It's so all, It's it... all too much pressure. It's all too much. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed. by elevator It's talk. all too much. What's my heart rate? It's high. So basically, if, we had to go interview athletes right after the race, and then you get stuck in an elevator with these people. It, like worst nightmare ever. No, not like, at all. I just stand you, there silently. I don't like I say. I don't care this much. I'm kind. Of, I'm just kind of just playing it up for the podcast. But okay. I roll my eyes. Yeah. Just but that my eyes. that elevator talk, man. It it's crazy how like kind of often that happens. Like they'll be like, I know you. You know about the sport. I'm gonna ask you like five questions, yeah, and you're just like, and you're like, I don't. Like have enough time to like go through this, and then they'll get off the elevator and like keep walking with you to like ask you those questions I've never further. Had that. Oh yeah, I've had it. And but like, even when like the woman is like, there's actually an employed button presser, uh-huh. and she's like, "How's your day going?" And I'm just like, "Come on, they've got no, nothing else no, going on. They're going mean, up and I mean, down all day." Like, we've got, we've not got time for this because in a minute there's going to be more people getting in this elevator, so I've not got even time to tell you. I guess, but I don't. When those Let's people keep say it simple that, simple to you, good. Yes or no reply. Um, enjoying the day? Yes or no reply. Let's just keep it short and snappy. Well, if they say, how's your day? You can just say, yeah, it's going well. How was, how your, was day? your day? Yes. Uh, yeah, whatever. How was no, no, my day? It doesn't work, does It's it? going well. Next question. Well, I like to give them more than that. Yeah, because I'm a people person. You are, well, clearly. <laughs> I'm a people, you love I'm a being crammed person. in an I'm, elevator with I'm a, people, a lot of people. I am a people person. <laughs> 
But those people, man, the elevator button pressers, the ones that are employees that have to do it, like, I like that. that job. Well, I like them, but I would never like to do that job. That sounds. Yeah, I don't fun. have the patience for it. I don't have the patience for it, and I feel like just literally going up and down, up and down all day long has got to be so. Just, I'm done. Yeah, I don't have the. I wouldn't have the patience. Yeah. So I always try to be courteous to them because I feel like that's not a fun job, and I wouldn't like it. So I appreciate them. Yeah, doing so do I. It. They're fine. Yeah, but it's not the random person that selects the elevator buttons for you. They're not fine. Well, they're employed. They've got a job to do. I guess, yeah. Maybe that guy's uh, sole purpose in life was to make your life on an elevator easier. They're ser- they are service people, and we salute them. Fantastic. Um, any other things you would like to discuss, Lewis? Um, no, I'm all right. All right. You all right? No, I think it was good. I I, I particularly liked uh, some of our points that we, we brought up about I'm MXGP. I'm glad we stuck with this list, because you were trying to change it last you know, minute. You, and it was very MXGP heavy, man. We got a really couple weeks wasn't. till the opener. It really wasn't. It quite was. We had two MXGP topics the on the heels of a fifth round of a Supercross. To, the, the travel one was kind of both. You were, yeah. over, you were overcomplicating it massively. Mm, not really. It was really just hard work. I think you need to simmer. Um, the pre-production on this needs some work. Glendale this weekend. We're both going. It's currently like pouring rain outside right now, but we get to be in a dome this weekend. So all is Glendale well. is my favorite race of the year, bar none. Yeah, I really like Glendale too. I like the vibe of the um, shopping. The mall thing right area. by it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I like the vibe. I, the weather's always great. I like the stadium. I like the bigger track. I just like Glendale makes me happy. That to me is sneaky should be the final. Should be the final round type. I don't know about that, but... Why? Well, I mean, it's better. Like, who cares? Yeah, Salt Lake City, whatever. Glendale, sure. So the championship comes down to the last race and you don't want the biggest track with a massive stadium with great stuff nearby. Yeah, sure, we can do that. Okay, what about like it being an SMX round? Uh, would that work? Why not? Is it big enough? I mean, they went outside the stadium one year. Yeah. Just have them go up that loading ramp. That was really weird for one year they went outside the stadium. Yeah, I think they realized it didn't work. But yeah, just like uh, anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So Glendale this weekend. I'm excited to be back in uh, the press box with you guys and hear all the banter you guys have to talk oh, about. We kind of just sat in silence in Detroit. Yeah. No uh, court being held. Just sat in silence. All right. Well, that's episode five of LVK More Than Moto. Uh, Kel Brower, Lewis Phillips here. Shout out to EVS Sports Nomura and Race Tech for backing the show. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. We will be back after the Glendale Supercross to discuss what happened in the desert and uh, I guess kind of hype up the off weekend after that because we have a break coming up after Glendale. Going to be interesting to see who carries that momentum into the break. Thanks, Lewis, for joining me. We'll see you guys next week.